Um, what I'd like to do first of all is to show that it, there are some inroads coming up with archaeologists and, and us lot, which we, we are grouped as lunatic fringe, of course, or we were traditionally. Um, and one of the things that we start with, with, with Mount Wales, which is a, a large country off the coast of England, <laughs> is, 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 which is a little island, as you know, um, is that archaeologists last year unearthed uh, what they, the press called the Blue Stone, um, which they have absolutely conclusively proved was one of, uh, was a, matched to one of three of the alleged Blue Stones at Stonehenge. It's not actually made of blue stone, but uh, the archaeologist in charge of that was Mike Parker Pearson, who you may have seen from those wonderful uh, documentaries about the uh, Ring of Brogger and the, uh, all that stuff in the openness that's going on at the moment. Um, and so I just want to show that it can work, that archaeologists get on <laughs> with, lun with lunatic fringe. It can work. <laughs> And um, that, that's us standing on the Aphesed stone. It's, it's actually volcanic tuff, it's not blue stone. But it is, there are three large stones made of that material at Stonehenge. This work's ongoing and it means that there is some movement of, and communication between the two factions. Now, it's almost certainly true that if you read any archaeological book about the sites that I visit in Wales, that there won't be a single mention anywhere of any astronomical connection between the sites. And nearly all the famous archaeologists of the past have visited all of the sites I'm now going to show you. And they catalogue things. There's certain artefacts have been found, never any bodies, because of the acid soil. Um, and the problem we have with all of these sites now is that I've got a catalogue of stuff. I don't think we any longer need to gasp and be amazed when we find alignments to the midsummer sunrise or the whatever key points of the solar or lunar calendar, we don't need to be surprised at this. We need to be thrilled, but we don't need to say, core, that's amazing, because, you know, at nearly every site does something like this. And this is the missing component that archaeologists haven't integrated into their training or their professional practice. It's as though a doctor was studying blood pressure. Here come my mints. Whoa! <laughs> I'll just snort one. Um, it's as though doctors studying blood pressure didn't understand or didn't le left out of the equation the lifestyle or the nutrition of the patient or um, the state of the heart valves. <coughs> this is a site you've seen before. It's aligned to the midsummer sunset. I want to whistle through these. You've seen, many of you will have seen them before, not just here, but at other lectures. The sea horizon is, is here. When the sun sets into the sea horizon, the little triangle there, as it sunsets, the sun bursts through the first triangle and then fades and goes into the second one. And right in the middle of there, across the Irish Sea, is the tallest mountain in the Wicklow Hills, Lugnaquilla. There's the sun setting now. It doesn't set into the mountain now, but in the date when it was <laughs> built, it set into this mountain here. I've done all the work on that. That's an old one. But out of this came these sorts of comments that we get in popular books. There is no evidence of the use of astronomical observations for practical purposes, such as the determination of the time of year. The idea that distant horizon features, such as notches, could be used to pinpoint the motions of the sun or moon to a few minutes of arc have now been discounted. I'm here, I, I'm here, to, I'm here to mock that. And I don't know how you can possibly justify that anymore. But this site also does other things. From this little site, Gaia is a blanket Welsh word for a settlement. Um, there are, there's a big quartz boulder in the middle of there, and from there, through this barrow, and through the monument you've just seen, is a line, can be drawn, and it's aligned to that angle, such that the moon sets at its major standstill every 19 years, or 18.6 years. And when I originally did this work, that was the date, the 2700 BC was the date the archaeologists gave me to work on for the, for the, for the date of the building of that monument, Lechadribeth, which means big, big lump of stone on a tripod. 
Subsequently, because of further work, I think I could push that back in time to around 3500 BC. Certainly, the, the knowledge that it gives was known at that, at that time. And the moon then would move further to the right and possibly clip the edge of that stone. And roughly, you can see that the edge of the stone, is, of the capstone, is interestingly in shaped to the angle of the uh, moon when it sets into the, into the earth. You only get a couple of goes at that, and I was there um, at 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, on the 4th of April in 2006, to catch that. That's the photograph I took. You can see the edge of the monument. I'm afraid I, didn't, I don't have very good equipment because I don't have any money. But I superimposed the picture of the monument, and that's the moon setting. And, so, and I had to make a correction because the Earth's tilt's changed. That's all routine stuff. I don't think you need to feel conned that it doesn't set where I just said it did, because it did when the monument was built. This is another site just down the road there, and that one has a wonderful um, resonance through this uh, uh, back passage, I think we, well, I must call it. Um, and you can see the carvings on the capstone. The sun, there's a sea horizon. It's now all treed up and forested, but that's where the sun sets. And that also does the moon, the major moon um, transit at, at midsummer. Oh, but the full moon at midsummer goes over the top of this hill at like a wheel, a silver wheel rolling around the sky with all these lovely little interesting luminosities. At, at Carragher Gough, which is further down the road, that's a, a radial engine. It's a Pratt and Whitney of. Um, some of you will know what that means. <laughs> Some of you will know the great age of the super constellation and the aeroplanes that had radial engines. Well, that's a burial chamber where instead of pistons, you put a body. And it's radial, and it goes out, looks over the sea. And you, my, now my dear wife, um, Trish, spotted that this stone here and that stone there were mirroring each other. This is from the centre of the monument. And then there's a blank slide, which is one of the prob mysteries, the great mysteries of technology for today. <laughs> but then we actually see the midsummer sun sunset occurring over that, that alignment there. Now, the biggest monument and the most famous monument in the area where I live is Pentrivan. It's a huge, it was described as a huge portal grave, um, massively investigated by Professor Gr Grimes in the 30s and visited by every archaeologist since. Um, it's a stunning monument with a really elegantly poised capstone. And it sits there in its magnificence, and hardly anything's known about who built it or why. It's dated at 3,500 BC. Further down from it, not, not more than 300 metres from it, is a huge stone. And with a second stone, based on a balance, like a seesaw, alongside it, and a perfectly flat area here, upon which I placed my then fiance's head. <laughs> now, that joke does always work. <laughs> I think it's misogyny in the group. And these cut marks here, are, you can plunge your arm into those up to your, at least at your elbow. So these are not minimal marks. And I don't know the origin of the stone, but nobody who's visited Pentryman has ever mentioned it. Yet, if you stand at it, and you see this tree behind it, which will be important later, if you stand at that monument and you look at the, the capstone of Pentrivan, you see behind it there's this huge rock outcrop, one of many, there's another one, on the horizon. And if you were here at 3500 BC, at w winter solstice, you would see the sun plunge down into the capstone. Oh, that thing we just saw is the Pyramid of Priscelli. <coughs> See that th shape there? That's one. There's a little one, and there's two big ones. And this is on a flat plateau, or more or less flat plateau, that rolls down to Newport and uh, Nevin on one side and into the Priscellis on the other. And Carmebian and Owen is, a, is the name of these stones. I won't translate it, but it's fine. Carmebi and Owen, you just see MO1, 2, 3, and 4. And uh, it's on this very road that Mike Parker Pearson discovered that stone I showed you at the beginning. The road where I took this photo is less than 300 yards from where that stone was found.